Hello, welcome, I am Jessica, and today I am excited to talk about Neom and the solo mode of how to play that. So Neom is a sort of a tiling city building game that I love because it reminds me of SimCity 2000. If you remember the 90s, this was a cool game, I think, at least for me. <laughs> You had all these different kind of zones that you were building and power lines that I never understood. My power lines never worked, but luckily in this one, it's much easier. So in Neom, you are building a city on a, a, a pretty quick, easy to understand grid. Um, there's different ones. So the artwork changes and then sort of that town center or middle resource in the middle will change. Um, and you will have roads on these that go off in all different directions and there are tons and tons of tiles i can grab a couple um i found my fantastic little organizer that keeps everything in here i have all the tiles um based on the different you know there's eras one two and three and then all the resources that you're going to be generating although the nice part about this is you're not collecting five million resource tokens if you produce it you just take a token to indicate i produced this <laughs> which as you can see on the boards is all across the top here um so you can start off with some of like the basic resources and then getting into some of the, what are the, we have like plastic and gold and wood, uh, I think concrete, glass and some diamonds. <laughs> and then you have the very high quality resources, the top ones, which is like cars and jewelry and I think like computer circuit boards. And as you are building your city, how do you do this? You are gonna have all these different tiles uh, and as you kind of the, the solo mode, what you're doing is it actually simulates a draft. So you have piles of varying numbers of tiles because you can actually customize this game a little bit. The tiles are labeled for different player counts, but in the solo mode, you can decide which ones to add in. I use them all, <laughs> but you can start off with a, a lower, uh, a lower number to give you sort of a you know, you control the selection a little bit. Um, so I just like having these piles um, and you will kind of go through them. There's going to be seven, I believe. And what happens is after a certain point, every era, there's an event. Let's not call it an event. Let's call it what it is. It's a disaster. That's what it's called. <laughs> and this could be like a flood or a fire. And the there's a certain one that comes out with each era and it's randomly mixed in with the rest of the building tiles. So when you flip over a stack, which could contain about, you know, six tiles, you're choosing which one to take. If you do not take the event early on, it affects you and you may have to pay for it. It may ruin part of your beautiful town. <laughs> uh, but if you choose it in some of the, if it's in one of the earlier piles, you actually get rid of that event. You forego picking up a tile, but that event doesn't affect you. There's also tiles you can pick up that actually protect you. So there's like a fire department and a police station that kind of protect the surrounding areas. There are power plants of different types. And the other cool thing, I have them in a bag, but there are kind of these, they look like these. These are cornerstone tiles and you'll draw these at the start of the game. And these kind of provide additional potentially objectives, other ways to score points or just other bonuses for your city. This is a beat your own score type of game, but it's very, very tricky. <laughs> and there are actually scoring tiers in the rule book, which is nice to see like, you know, how, did I do well? Am I a, a great city planner? Or should I just like hang out in the park and build like an ant <laughs> city? <laughs> Um, but it is a really cool game. Just those decisions on how to build everything, building up a residential city, their center, um, and having those connected tiles creates scoring opportunities. The rule book though, I will say is one of the really great ones because the last few pages, this is one of them, actually has a summary and kind of some extra points about every single tile in the game. So let me just grab a tile real quick to show you what that might look like. So for instance, it's a grocery store. 
<laughs> and this grocery store is telling me that it's a commercial property. That's what's up here. It is telling me that this is for one plus players. Because again, like I said, there's some of these are four different player counts, but at solo you decide which stacks and which um, which ones to really use. And then this tells me, where am I here? I get three coins immediately for building the grocery store. And I also gain one extra coin every time during the income phase, which happens at the end of each era. Also, greatest little art in here. I mean, there's like a giant apple on top of the grocery store. <laughs> And actually, if you go through, there are some kind of Easter eggs hidden throughout here. I won't say which tile it is, but there's kind of a throwback to Back to the Future <laughs> in one of these, which is just really cool to see. Um, and just really tiny details and just finding those, another fun part of the game. But where in the world was I? <laughs> so if I had a question though, if I, if I saw this and I wasn't quite sure what the grocery store did, the rule book has the grocery store in it, which is gonna say exactly what I just said. Grocery store, you get three coins for placing this tile and an income of one coin at the end of each generation. And then it also gives you kind of, not necessarily strategy tips, but a little bit of other information. It also says this tile provides a total of six coins over the course of the game, which is equivalent to three victory points. Which again, it's not telling you what the right strategy is, but it gives you a little more information so you can see, oh, this is worth gonna be worth points to me um, because there is a lot going on. As you can kind of see with all the tiles, um, that was a, what is that? That's an era one tile. Get back in there. Um, if I grab, let's just grab a stack in here, um, which you wouldn't see all of these at once. These are, this is split up, I think into five piles, but um, just to give you an idea, these are all level three ones. So for instance, here is a high-rise luxury condo. That's a lot. <laughs> and what that's telling me though is kind of up here, these are all the resources that I need in order to build this, but it's gonna be worth 10 points. Pretty good. Also, you'll notice there's only one little road coming in on this side here, and you have to connect to the town center, basically. You can have dead ends and everything, but this would have to connect somehow to that. Another one, what do we have? A clothing store. So there's another one, so I would need plastic to place it. It's a commercial building, and then there is more income that I would get, um, or coins. And again, placing these tiles usually costs something. <laughs> Um, like for instance, I think we haven't really seen one, but here's a police department. Like I was saying, that'll protect against some disasters, but it does cost me a coin to place, but it protects against some possible disasters. What else is there? There's an import office, which off the top of my head, I can't exactly remember, but I think the benefit here is that when you place any other tile, you can ignore one of those goods requirements um, for some of the common and uncommon. Not the rare ones though. You gotta get those cars and those jewelries and those circuit boards. <laughs> There's a warehouse and that gives you points based on the different types of goods that you produce in your city and so on. Um, and again, you're gonna create, you're not gonna place everything. Um, you usually probably are gonna fit in maybe like 20 tiles. Again, it depends on what you're taking in terms of those disasters and what you're losing to those disasters. And in the end, you just count up your points and see how it went. But it is a really cool little tile builder, um, not necessarily tile builder, but a city builder with tiles. I love tile placement games, so this is a lot of fun. For solo, this probably takes me around 20, 25 minutes, which is just really great for getting that sort of city building, Sim City type situation experience and nostalgia. <laughs> and I think it does it really well. This one I think flew under the radar a little bit, but it is a lot of fun. Um, I still have not scored anywhere near what I need to, to, <laughs> to call myself like a great city planner, but it's just fun. And there's a ton of variety with those tiles that come out because again, you're gonna be choosing from stacks of them each era. Um, so you're not just like, you know, it's not like, okay, there's three out there, I can buy one and then I can put one. No, it's, here's the stack. If you want multiple ones in that stack, too bad. You can only choose one. <laughs> so 
having those limitations, and this is another thing that I've been finding with solo games, is having limitations is fun when done correctly. <laughs> that I think is what creates these intriguing decisions that feel like they are meaningful and that they do something and also helps with reusability, with coming back to it because those decisions are always gonna change based on what tiles are in those piles, how your city's coming about. Like I said, those cornerstone tiles, This is these are all of them. Um, actually, hold on. Rule book, do you have a list of components? Can you tell me? Hmm? 30 cornerstone tiles. And in most games, you're only gonna have three of those. So huge amount of, of variety there and variability, tons of choices. And I highly, highly recommend Neom as a great, kind of a either a tile laying game or a city builder, or if you are like me and remember SimCity 2000, Neom is very similar to the board game version of it. Um, I like the, it's not too complex, but there's a lot going on and a lot of choices. Your final city, my favorite thing to do, I always pick where I would like to live, which in some cases, I've had cities that have zero residential areas, so I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna live at the warehouse. <laughs> it's, the best, it's the best area in town. <laughs> but again, it's just those fun little, you know, details in there that kind of go along with that artwork I was saying. Um, it, it's a very different sort of art style that some people may like, some people may not, but those Easter eggs make it kind of fun just to see how it all flows together. And it's supposed to be a city of the future. So there's some futuristic things there. It is just cool. So that is my rundown of Neom and the solo mode for it. Definitely recommend checking it out. And as always, thank you for watching and stopping by. Take care. Bye.